Carolina Dad Breakdown. And Breakdown it is. You heard me talking a little bit about the, the segments as far as like the pieces that I'm bringing together for this. But getting into the breakdown of this game, what a win, man. Can't say that enough. I cannot say that enough about this team. There are people out here on X who are complaining that we are celebrating this win, that you have fans of this team that are upset, that are just saying, oh, well, they're a raggedy Atlanta Falcons team, or, oh, it's just the Falcons, and it's or it's just our second win of the season. I don't care, man. A win is a win, and I said this. You can forget everything that's happened this season, the Bryce versus CJ, the offensive line woes, the wide receiver woes, the coaching woes, everything throw it aside throw it aside and celebrate this victory it's victory monday for a team that has not had many victories this year two two lone victories folks that's it so if you can't take time to celebrate this i don't know what to tell you you've got to be optimistic in these situations when there's not a lot to grasp to but you can grasp to that and i'm going to grasp to it and i'm going to take it and i'm going to be satisfied with three games to go if we compete, and that's the thing, we're competing against a team that's fighting for a playoff spot. Are we in the playoff hunt? No, but it's a division rival that you knock to six and eight, push them further back from making the playoffs. And each game that comes up, we're just going to do do all we can to do that. Green Bay is going to be a very tough game coming up this week on Christmas Eve. Travel to Jacksonville, another tough matchup. Two playoff, two playoff teams. Hey, we got three games to go. Let's see what we got. Like, let's get out there and fight. And then closing out the season with your rival Tampa Bay, who looks like they may be taking the division right now. you got them and the Saints. Maybe spoil their playoff hopes and get them knocked out of this race. So, yes, I am going to celebrate this win. Now, early on in the game, a few things frustrated me a little bit with Thomas Brown, as usual. And I, I know it's tough circumstances for the team, but there were back-to-back -back plays and short-yarded situations where we line up in the gun. It's third and two. We need two yards. We're in the gun, handing the ball off. Follow that up. We go for it on fourth down. We turn it over on downs. But guess what? We're lined up in the gun again. We try to just outsmart ourselves in these situations instead of just doing the smart thing, handing the ball off to Chuba. Now, I know there are nine guys in the box. They showed that on the broadcast. They talked about that a lot, being able to play downhill, being in the box. For those who don't know, the box is within four yards of the ball on both sides of the ball. So they have nine players essentially there to help stop the run. But that's a given considering the conditions. But let's give ourselves an opportunity or at least give the offensive line and Chuba Hubbard an opportunity to lower his pads and get the first down and do that. So that's my main bone to pick. Now, when you talk about the grand scheme of the game, I can't say enough about the defense. And I can't say enough about Ejero Ibero and what he has done. Conditions aside, he put together a great game plan. And I know that we're going to throw the ball a lot, or at least both teams are going to be pretty limited on throwing the ball. But the execution that we put on the field and that we continue to put on the field week after week with one of the Top defenses in yards allowed and now giving up a touchdown. You know, I know it's not going to help our numbers that much as far as points allowed per game. But when I talk about the future of this organization, I don't know that there's a path forward where we can keep Ejero Ivero and bring in a new coach at the same time. It feels like a situation where Ejero is going to be a head coach candidate or a coach that gets opportunities to become a head coach. And it's almost like a pipe dream or miracle situation where we get to bring in an OC or an offensive minded coach and retain him. So I'll be, you know, there's a lot of talk coming out of the Carolinas that we want this offensive minded coach. We've seen the last two seasons, the identity of this team that, that with what we have on defense, the identity of this team just needs to be to get down, keep pounding and run the ball. That's all you got to do. Get down, keep pounding and run the ball. Derek Brown. Talked about him and his Pro Bowl status, you know, his best year yet, best year yet, Frankie Louvu, Brian Burns, and people sometimes get upset that his stats aren't showing up in the, in the box score. But the, the way that we went about this game and being able to stop the run, 
because we knew they were going to run the ball, but being able to shut them down, you know, especially when you go back and look at the the first game when they ran all over us, almost 130 yards, I believe, and showed out and no conditions were different and it was indoors, but it doesn't matter, man. One thing I give Chris Tabor a little bit of grief. He did some smart things. One of them earlier in the game broadcast brought this up and it was perfect timing. And they said, Hey, you may see a timeout in a weird situation. Sure enough, there was like two or three seconds left in the first quarter, and he calls a timeout when we're about to punt the ball. And the reason he did that was to punt with the wind and have that at our back. So I'm not going to knock him for some of those smart decisions. And he's all he's, that's what he thinks about and does. You know, if Frank Wright or someone else is the head coach of this team, I don't think they're going to burn a timeout in that situation to do that. But if you're a special teams coach and that's what you coach and do, prime opportunity to say, hey, guess what, guys? I'm calling that timeout, and we're going to punt it, and I'm going to take advantage of the field position. And there for, for a little bit, that's what it was, was this field position battle between the two teams. And we were winning that battle, and we saw it flipped into Atlanta's favor, and I called it out. I was like, eventually, you keep moving the ball this way, and Atlanta keeps getting the ball you know, closer and closer and closer to, to score. Something good's going to happen in their favor. And sure enough, they had the long play. The long play to Smith that set them up for the touchdown score, the only touchdown score. But after that, we battled, man. Smart decisions by Tabor, not putting Eddie Pinheiro out there to kick unnecessary kicks. So you keep, you know, in these conditions, you want to keep your kicker as healthy as possible. You never know when he plants and slips and things may not go right. So you have Gruger Hill, Gruger Hill out there kicking on kickoffs. How I mean, nobody was expecting that, but I was like, he thought about this. Like he's, I'm somebody tweeted and was like, do you think Eddie's hurt? And I was like, Eddie's not hurt. Like this is just Chris Tabor being a smart coach and having that special teams philosophy and background to know how to handle the situation. And that's exactly what he did. So I commend him for that. I commend him for those decisions, but we relied on the defense. So again, the decision to go for it on fourth down, that's the one that baffled me the most because we have the change of possession. We get the turnover. I don't know if it's in the outside, like the 20 or 30. Get down. You need a first down. And I think it was like third and four. We don't get it. But with, with the way that we have been playing, I'm like, why do you not just go ahead and go for it? Because worst case, you got the ball there. You're going to force them to punt from a bad situation or bad spot anyways. But we took the points, and that ended up being the difference. Now, going in and looking at this final drive, because that final drive really was the difference in the game. And like I said, I know I talked about coming into this, like that drive was Texans-esque, so to speak. Like that was going to be the difference. So number one, to get into this drive, it comes off the turnover. So if you remember, the Falcons were close to scoring. So it was seven to six, Falcons are driving. The interception occurs. And I'm trying to actually pull it up so I can tell you. And I don't know why I can't get it to to pull up the way that I've got it. Anyways, interception occurs. Because if you think, I was like, they're at least going to get three points out of this. Touchdown would have, like, that would have been the game. We end up getting the interception starting on our own five-yard line. So this was a 17-play, 90-yard drive, took seven minutes and 35 seconds off the clock, all the way down to the end. Man, so we start off running the ball. You have those big receptions, uh, you know, that happen along this drive. I mean, the play that Shark made, Shark, Shark, people call him Shark uh, on the Panthers staff, The toe tap, man, I've given him a lot of grief, but the way this team delivered on that final drive, I was just blown away by it, man. I was like, this is, this is Carolina Panthers football. This is a team that wants to win. It's a team that's not, you know, putting it in. It's a team where Bryce Young is leading another drive. Yeah. People say, well, it's a one win team going up against a six and seven or six and seven team. And like, yeah, it is. But we're playing like Bryce is getting better and better and trying to get better. And he's going to have to have these moments. That's two game winning drives this season that ended on a field goal Two, two for the rookie. His only wins. But hey, having that experience in the future, being able to take that, you can't replicate those things. And so having that mentality to be able to do that. Hands down, 
you you just like hats off hats off to this entire offense in that situation and great play calling i give thomas brown some grief i'm gonna give him some credit because he put together one heck of a drive and this team continued to deliver play after play we did get some breaks with penalties along the way but those things happen and it's important for you to take advantage of those things when they happen and then coming up coming in now two minute warning hits we start driving the ball forcing atlanta to use all their timeouts and then we are down it was third and three at the atlanta eight we get first and goal at the atlanta two atlanta takes the timeout so in this situation it's let's see a minute 41 seconds to go and I'm like, let's score a touchdown. Just knowing the conditions and how we played, I'm like, let's score. Let's score a touchdown, please. Just get some points on the board. And we come out in victory formation, which is something that Mike K joked, like, I don't even know if the Panthers know how to, to kneel down. Like, <laughs> I don't know how often we practice that play, but we did. And so we take, you know, the two kneel downs, or I guess three, really, to set up Eddie Pinero's try. One second to go, you know, call the timeout and Eddie Pinero money. I was thinking that the Falcons were going to try to pull the Texans shenanigans with no timeouts and, you know, maybe jump off sides, but they didn't. They didn't. Hats off to them. Way to deliver. What a win, folks. What a win. Nine to seven. All day. I'm happy. I'll take it. Hey, also, this win. So if you go back over the last four years, coming into this, it was the last three. The Panthers and Falcons have split the series. Coming in, we knew Falcons won first game. Panthers win this game. Guess what? That trend continues. Panthers and Falcons have now split the last, the joint or the in season meetings over the last four season, seasons. Excuse me. So one and one flipped over the last four years. Anyways, all right, y'all. That's your breakdown. It's time to give out the awards. <laughs> 